Squad, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jasmine and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys that a lot of people might not be able to understand or they might not know until this video. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys how figure skating programs are scored or how figure skaters get points on jumps, spins, footwork, and all those things like that. So without further ado, let's get started. So I have this booklet from the ISU talking about the scale of values, which is pretty much how much a skater gets for a jump, spin, like a throw if you're in pairs, like footwork, and things like that. So we have a lot of pages of the points that you get for certain jumps and spins and I'm going to read to you guys the points for each of the jumps first because those come first in the list. Starting off with the lowest jump on this list is a single toe loop and that jump is worth 0.40 points. Then we have a single cow which is worth 0.40 points as well. Then we have a single loop which is worth 0.50 points. Then we have an Euler, which is worth 0.50, and if you guys don't know what like an Euler or a Euler, whatever you guys call it, I like calling it a half loop, but the technical version for it is a Euler. It's a half loop, and a lot of people use this in their lower level programs if you can't do a full loop, but it's also a good like connecting element for if you do jump combinations. Say you would do like double axle, half loop, triple sow, or double axle, Euler, triple sow, and that's how you get to the other foot so that you can do a jump on the other foot in the combination. Then you have a single flip, which is worth 0.50 as well, and then you have a single lutz, which is worth 0.60. Then we have a single axle, which is worth 1.10 points, and then we have double toe, which is worth 1.30 points, double sow cow, which is worth 1.30 points as well, double loop, which is worth 1.70 points, double flip, which is 1.80 points, double lutz, which is worth 2.10 points. Now we're moving into the jumps that are worth quite a lot. We have a double axle, which is worth 3.30 points, a triple toe, which is worth 4.20 points, a triple sow, which is worth 4.30 points, a triple loop, which is worth 4.90 points, a triple flip, which is worth 5.30 points, and a triple lutz, which is worth 5.90 points. So if you guys thought that those points were a lot, now we're moving in to the points that are worth, like, literally so much. So we have triple axle, which is worth 8 whole points, a quad toe, which is worth 9.50 points, a quad sow, which is worth 9.70 points, a quad loop, which is worth 10.50 points, a quad flip, which is worth 11 points, a quad lutz, which is worth 11.50 points, and a quad, actual, a quad axle, which nobody has ever landed yet, is worth 12.50 points. Now we're going to talk a little bit about under rotations and edge calls. So there is a difference between under rotated and downgraded. So say you start a jump off going forwards, like if you're doing an axle, you usually land backwards. So if you jump forwards and you land backwards, to get a downgrade, which is the worst thing to ever get in a competition, is where you land completely forward or you have like half of the rotation cut off from the landing. So if you would take off forward, you would land with your foot facing forward and do a three turn to the back on the ice. And a like under rotation would be if you landed between that half and quarter mark and you have to be in between that spot to get an under rotation. And to get your jump called clean, you would have to be between the quarter and the fully rotated mark. Now that we know what downgraded and like under rotated and clean mean, now we're going to talk a little bit about edge calls. So a lot of skaters struggle with edge calls and personally I'm one of those and you can only get edge calls on two jumps, which is double lutz and double flip. So the most common one is probably double lutz because it is the hardest and it's pretty easy to do the wrong edge on it. So usually for a traditional Lutz, you would start off going on an outside edge and when you take off, you pick your toe in the back 
and you flick your foot so you're still on an outside edge by the time that you're taking off. A lot of skaters, what they do is they pick their foot and they lean their foot inwards and then rotate, which causes them to go onto an inside edge, which is what we don't want, and that's how you get an edge call. So on a flip, this is almost if you have a perfect lutz and you never have a problem with your edge calls, then this is how you move on to like your flip getting an edge call, which is like, so if you do a flip, you originally do an inside edge on your flip before you take off. So you pick and then you do an inside edge and then you take off. But a lot of skaters sometimes tend to do like an outside edge on their flip because they're so used to doing it on a Lutz. So they would pick and then they would do the outside edge like you would on a Lutz. I know it's kind of confusing, but if you guys are figure skaters, you would probably understand it. Now, something else that terrifies literally every single skater is what we like to call the dashes, the dashes of death. Of death. So pretty much what this is, if you're looking at a protocol and next to an element you have a dash or like a dashed line, those are the worst things you ever want because it means that you either pop the jump or you just miss that element completely. And it's so terrifying to see those on your protocol because you literally get nothing for that element at all. Okay, so now we're starting to move into the spinning section. In figure skating, there are millions of spins and there's so many new ones coming out literally every single day. And all these spins are categorized into four different categories. So you have an upright spin, a layback spin, a camel spin, and a sit spin. And then you also have four other categories, which would be the flying spins. So you could do a flying upright spin, a flying layback spin, a flying camel spin, and a flying sit spin. Spins are usually categorized into four different levels as well. I know there's a lot of categorizing here. So the base level is probably the lowest level you can get on a spin. The level one, there's a level two, a level three, and a level four. So that's actually five, not four, sorry. So now I'm going to tell you guys like what each of the spins are worth and what their levels would be. So you have an upright spin, which is at a level base, and that would be worth one point. And then you have an upright spin level one, which would be worth 1.20 points. An upright spin level two, which is worth 1.50 points. An upright spin level 3, which is worth 1.90 points, and an upright spin level 4, which is worth 2.40 points. So if you guys aren't sure what an upright spin is, it's technically a spin where your body is upright. So a lot of people do Y's, you can do I's, you can do like that one where you cross your foot in the front and lift it up, and there's a lot of spins that fall under this category, and I don't think I'll be able to name all of them. Then we have layback spins. So a layback spin with a base level is worth 1.20. A layback spin level one, which is worth 1.50. A layback spin level two, which is worth 1.90. A layback spin level three, which is worth 2.40. And a layback spin level four, which is worth 2.70. So a layback spin technically says it in its name. It's where you lean backwards or it like involves a lot of back flexibility. So you could do a regular layback where you lean backward. I'll like put pictures on the screen so you guys can see what I'm showing you guys. Well, not showing you guys, but see what I'm talking about. So there's a layback spin. You can do a side layback spin where you're leaning to the side. You have hair cutter, which is where you like bring your head to your foot while you're leaning backwards. And you also have a Beelman spin, which is where you take both of your arms and bring your foot above your head. Now we're moving into camel spins. So you have a camel spin level base, which is worth 1.10, a camel spin level one, which is worth 1.40, a camel spin level two, which is worth 1.80, Camel spin level 3, which is worth 2.30, and a camel spin level 4, which is worth 2.60. 
So a camel spin is technically where your head and your foot are around at the same level. So you guys probably know what I'm talking about, but you almost make like a straight line with your upper body, like your head and then your foot and you're like in a line. And some spins that would go is obviously a camel. You could do like camel change edge, which is where you go on an outside edge on a camel. You can do a camel catch, which is where like you bring your foot up. You catch opposite arm, opposite leg, and then bring your foot up. And then you can do the same arm, same leg, and there's just a lot of other spins that fall into this category as well. Now we're moving into the sit spin category, and this one is personally my favorite category. So you have a sit spin level base, which is a 1.10, sit spin level one, which is worth 1.30, Sit spin level 2, which is worth 1.60. Sit spin level 3, which is worth 2.10. And a sit spin level 4, which is worth 2.50. So a sit spin is technically in the name as well. So you're sitting down or you have a 90 degree angle from your leg and like the bottom of your thigh, I guess. So you make a 90 degree angle or a little bit lower, but you can't be above 90 degrees because they don't count that as a sit spin. And what you can do under this category is like a broken leg, which is my personal favorite. You can do a sit spin, obviously, because it's a sit spin category. You can do like tucks, you can do cannonballs. There's just a lot of spins that fall under this category as well. So I'm gonna go through the flying spins pretty quickly. And a flying spin is technically where you jump up in the air before you land and do your spin. So you can do flying camel, flying sit spin, death drop, butterfly. I've seen a lot of people do flying laybacks, which is pretty cool. And there's just a lot of those options. You can pretty much do a fly into any spin, I guess. So you have a flying upright spin base, which is worth 1.50. Flying upright spin level one, which is worth 1.70. Flying upright spin level two, which is worth two points. Flying upright spin level three, which is worth 2.40. And flying upright spin level four, which is worth 2.90. Then we have flying layback spin level base, which is 1.70. Flying layback spin level one, which is worth two points. Flying layback spin level two, which is worth 2.40 points. Flying layback spin level three, which is worth 2.90 points. And flying layback spin level four, which is worth 3.20 points. <laughs> then you have a flying camel spin base, which is worth 1.60. Flying camel spin level one, which is worth 1.90. Flying camel spin level two, which is worth 2.30. Flying camel spin level three, which is worth 2.80. And a flying camel spin level four, which is worth 3.20. And then we're on the last category, which is flying sit spins. So you have flying sit spin base, which is worth 1.70. Flying sit spin level one, which is worth two points. Flying sit spin level two, which is worth 2.30 points. Flying sit spin level three, which is worth 2.60 points, and flying sit spin level four, which is worth three points. Now we're moving into step sequences. So a lot of skaters call this footwork. I personally call it footwork as well, but the technical name of it is a step sequence. If you guys aren't sure what a step sequence is, you guys have probably seen it if you've watched skaters do their programs. It's the piece of the program where the skaters are doing a bunch of turns and like, like, I don't know, photo movements and stuff. A lot of people do like pauses and breaks during their step sequences and it's just really personalizable and you have to have like certain amount of turns, you have to go different directions to get different levels, but you guys have definitely seen it. It's the point where you don't do any spins or any jumps. So again, just like everything else, as I already mentioned, you have levels. So you have a base, a one, a two, a three, and a four. So for figure skaters to be able to get a level four step sequence, you first of all have to be in novice and up. So only skaters in novice, junior, and senior are able to like try to get a level four. In the lower levels, you can only try to get for a level two max, I believe. So for step sequences, it's kind of confusing and I'm not one of the step sequence professionals, 
but I understand most of it. So to get a step sequence bass, that's pretty much where you don't do as many as the of the turns that are needed. So if you only do like two of the seven turns that you need, you would probably get a bass or a level one because those are the lowest. So for a step sequence level one, it's a little bit more than a bass because here you get more of the turns. And by, what I mean by getting the turns is when you do clean turns, which is pretty hard most of the time, and it's kind of confusing. So what they do is they slow down the footwork if they're not 100% sure if your turn was clean. And you guys probably have no idea what I just said, but a clean turn is probably like a textbook version of the turn. It has to be an exact copy of a turn. Like some turns go inside to outside, but a lot of skaters tend to go like inside and then they switch to an outside right before they turn. And that's automatically not counted as a clean turn, which is kind of hard to get. <laughs> So then you have a step sequence level two, and this is the highest step sequence level you can go for in intermediate. I'm not exactly sure about the lower levels, but I'm 100% sure that you can only get a level two in intermediate, and in the lower levels, it's either two or lower. So step sequence level three is very hard to get. You have to have almost every single turn clean in your footwork. You have to have all the turns, you have to switch directions, you have to do turns on different foots, and all of those. So it's kind of hard and it's also a little confusing when you're trying to put like a footwork together. And then the final one is a level four, which is probably the hardest one to get because for level four, you have to have body movement. You have to have literally a perfect step sequence to get this. And body movement is probably really hard to get because you have to go up and down and like do a bunch of arm movements and stuff. And so that's why rarely anybody gets this one. So I'm going to be competing in novice this year if we have any competitions, but when my coach was putting together my footwork, I noticed that you have to have four turns. So you have to have a rocker, a counter, a bracket, or a Choctaw, and you have to have all four of those in your footwork, and you have to have them going both ways. And you also have to have twizzles, and you have to have them going on either foot. You can't have the same twizzle on the same foot. So you have to do them on different foots to get a count. Now let's talk a little bit about GOE. So GOE is short for grade of execution, and this is how well you do a jump or how badly you do a jump. So you have negative five all the way to plus five. So you start with like the base of a jump or a spin or a step sequence and you can either go up or down from that depending on how well you did it. So GOE is technically a percentage of your jump either added or taken away from it. So you can get plus one, plus two, plus three, or plus four and plus five. And to get a plus one, you will get plus 10% of the jump or spin or step sequence that you did. So if you take the base value and you take 10% of that, they add it to the base value. So you get 10% extra. Or if it's level or if it's plus two, you get plus 20%. Plus three, it's plus 30, plus four, it's plus 40, and plus five is plus 50%. And then if you get downgrades or minus GOE, which is negative one, you would get taken away negative 10% of whatever element you just did. You have negative two is negative 20, negative three is negative 30, negative four is negative 40%, and then negative five is negative 50% of the jump. And it's terrifying to get a negative five because you lose half of your jump or spin or step sequence. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about how a skater can get or lose GOE. So in figure skating we have these things called bullets. So you have a you have six bullets for each category. So you have jump elements, spins, step sequences, and choreographic sequences. Here it states that for if you want plus one, you have to do one of the bullets. If you want plus two, you need two bullets. 
For plus three, you need three bullets. For plus four is four bullets. And for plus five, you need five or more bullets, which is quite a lot. But luckily, if you want a plus four or a plus five, it states here that you can do the first three bullets highlighted in bold must be presented on either the jump, the spin, the step sequence, or the choreographic. So now I'm going to read them for you guys. So for jump elements, you need very good height and very good length of all jumps in a combo or sequence, good takeoff and landing, effortless throughout, including rhythm and jump combination, steps before the jump, unexpected or creative entry, very good potty position from the takeoff to landing, element matches the music. Then for spins, we have good speed and or acceleration during spin, we have good controlled clear positions, height and air landing position and flying spin, effortless throughout, maintaining a centered spin, creativity and or originality, element matches the music. Then for step sequences, you have deep edges, clean steps and turns, element matches the music, effortless throughout with good energy, flow and execution, creativity and or originality, excellent commitment and control of the whole body, good acceleration and deceleration. Then for choreographic sequences, you have creativity and or originality, element matches the music and reflects the concept slash character of the program, effortless throughout with good energy, flow and execution, good ice coverage or interesting pattern, good clarity and precision, excellent commitment and control of the whole body. Now the final thing we're going to talk about is how you lose points on like all your elements in your programs. This one's probably the worst one to talk about because of course nobody wants to lose points but it does happen sometimes and these are the reasons why. So if you have a downgraded sign which is like the two arrows or like the two signs I guess, I don't know how to say it but you have to get a negative three or a negative four depending on the judges. Then you have a fall, and for a fall, you automatically have to get a negative five. The judges have no say whatsoever. If either like your hand or like your elbow or anything touches the ice, um, if they count it as a fall and you have to get a negative five. Then you have landing on two feet in a jump. That's where you land two-footed, obviously. Most skaters land one-footed, but if you land two-footed, that's where your other foot touches the ice. Even if it's just for like a quarter of a second, you have to get negative three or a negative four. Then if you step out of a landing on a jump, then you have to get a negative three or a negative four again. And if you step out of a jump, that technically means you're doing the landing, but then you step on your free leg, which is the one that's usually in the air on a landing, and you step on that leg or like you trip and step on it. But if your free leg touches the ice, like to step on it, unless you're turning forward to continue your program, then they have to count that as a step out. If you do two three turns in between a jump combo, then you have to get negative two or negative three. And doing two three turns is probably the worst thing you could ever do, but it definitely is better than not doing the second jump at all. Um, even though you get minus points for it, it's definitely a lifesaver if you wouldn't be able to do the combo right after the jump and you don't want to fall or something. So if you have to, then you should use it. <laughs> then if you have a poor takeoff, you get negative two to a negative three. And what they mean by a poor takeoff is if like your arms aren't in like the right spot or like you're just falling all over the place right before you step into the jump, they have to give you a negative two or a negative three. Then you have the under rotated sign. And for this one, you have to get a negative one or a negative two. And then if you do a half loop, that looks like you're stepping over to the other foot, where if you land a jump and it looks like you're just doing like a three turn to the other foot instead of like the clear jump to the other foot, then they have to give you a negative one or a negative two again. Then if your jump has poor speed, poor height, poor distance, or like poor air position, you have to get a negative one to a negative three. Then if you touch down with both of your hands out of a jump, you get negative two to negative three. And if you touch down with only one hand, you get negative one to a negative two. 
And then finally, if you have a weak landing, then you get a negative one or a negative three, which pretty much is like if you land and you come down and like go on an inside edge, which happens a lot of times, but you have to get minuses for it. This is the end of the video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. I want you guys to comment down below if you guys found this video helpful and if you guys want me to do more videos like this one talking about like how figure skating is like scored or just generally about figure skating. But anyways, also don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn notifications. Love you guys. Bye!